Hello, this is week three of GPY 112 Global Climate Crisis at Grand Valley State University. Uh, my name is Elena Rubimtseva, and this week we will talk about the impacts of the global climate crisis around the world. As we all have learned in the previous lecture, there is an overwhelming evidence that climate has been changing and climate has been primarily changing as a result of human activities. Uh, since the beginning of the industrial period. And this climate change has been accelerating, particularly in the last 40, 50 years, as um, emissions of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases have increased. So you can see from this map that uh, climate change is expected to continue and the predicted annual temperatures are likely to increase by the end of the century significantly surpassing 1.5 or even 2 degrees, uh, which is an aspiration goal of the Paris Agreement. So those are average numbers. Of course, you know, we are thinking about, you know, 2 degrees. That's really the number that we cannot afford to surpass if uh, we hope that uh, the major tipping points in the Earth system and amplifications of climate change could be still avoided. And of course, climate change is very distributed spatially. Uh, so in general, as you can see from this map, uh, there is a much faster warming in the Northern Hemisphere than in the Southern Hemisphere. And this is happening because there is significantly more land in the Northern Hemisphere and more ocean in the Southern Hemisphere and land is uh, warming much faster. Also, areas close to the North and South Pole, the Arctic and the Antarctic, are warming much faster than um, areas that are close to the equator. And you know already that the land itself is warming faster than uh, the ocean. So the heat uptake by the ocean, the ocean can simply take more heat. Uh, actually, most of the heat, as we learned from the previous lecture, is taken uh, to date by the ocean. So the predictions really don't look very good for us unless uh, during the next maybe 10 years, we really can implement very meaningful policies, uh, significantly drastically reducing the emissions of fossil fuels and start drawing down uh, some of this uh, carbon back from the atmosphere into soils, uh, into vegetation, uh, into the rocks, into the ocean, into other carbon sink. This is really the only way for us uh, to avoid the uh, kind of inescapable uh, catastrophe that is unfolding right now. And um, you know, I'm saying unescapable, but of course, you know, like it's, it's just because we still have this. Um, even though we still have this uh, uh, fairly narrow window of opportunity when we can act and we can escape at least the worst and we can. Uh, pre prevent the worst of this crisis. There are numerous impacts of climate change around the world, and uh, this is not something that is going to happen in future. This is already happening right now as we speak. This currently happening impacts of climate change include sea level rise, weather extremes, uh, such as heat waves and droughts and abnormal amount of precipitations and tornadoes and hurricanes, wildfires, loss of glaciers, uh, loss of uh, polar ice caps, uh, lots of glaciers in the mountains, massive loss of biodiversity. We are really living through the mass extinction right now as a result of climate change. Numerous health impact for us, but also for other, all other life forms. Food security impacts, water shortage impacts, massive impact on our built infrastructure, loss of infrastructure just because of the um, weather extremes, uh, temperature changes, precipitation changes around the world. Uh, and as this crisis unfolding very unevenly around the world, uh, it is leading to more and more forced migration, environmental migration, climate migration is really becoming reality already as people start resettling from the areas that are affected by sea level rise and more and more by areas that are affected by drought, by wildfires, 
Um, so the problem of climate refugees, environmental refugees, is really becoming more and more acute already now. And all these problems are likely to accelerate during the next few years and decades unless we come up with very meaningful climate policies uh, without any further delays. One of the consequences of climate change, uh, one of the very noticeable and observable impact are the changes in the precipitation pattern. As uh, the surface of the ocean, as the surface of the earth is becoming warmer and warmer, warmer air can hold significantly more water vapor. Uh, you're probably noticing it even this summer here in Michigan. Um, we have significantly higher levels of humidity, significantly higher levels of the heat index, which is basically the temperature adjusted for uh, the humidity. And so as this warmer air is holding more and more moisture in the air, uh, it creates this massive amounts of water going up to the higher levels of the atmosphere where uh, this water vapor forms uh, the so-called atmospheric rivers and then these atmospheric rivers move sometimes very long distances creating really this effect of the water bombs that are falling as massive amount of precipitation. So not only we see a uh, much higher frequency and intensity of tornadoes and hurricanes and uh, westerly cyclones around the world. Uh, we also see significantly higher amounts of precipitation that is falling uh, during a very short period of time, sometimes associ associated with those storms. Here in Michigan, we have increase of uh, 1% um, precipitation extremes by 37%. So if you think about this most intense 1% um, high precipitation events that are extremely rare around the year, their amount in terms of the precipitation delivered has increased by 37%. So not only we see increasingly more and more uneven pattern of precipitation when some areas are becoming drier and some areas are becoming more humid, when we finally see this huge amount of precipitation falling as one-time event, uh, their consequences can be really devastating. Another very noticeable impact of climate change is, of course, the loss of the glaciers. So here we see massive decline of the mass of ice in Greenland between 1935, when you saw the previous picture being taken, and um, in the past few years, and this decline of ice mass is really happening right now everywhere around the world. So this picture of the iceberg carved from the Antarctic glacier uh, was taken in February 2020 uh, from space. Uh, and uh, you can see areas the size of Texas or the size of France, this big massive chunks of ice. Um, live in the, um, you know, forming the icebergs, uh, live in the coast of Antarctica, live in the coast of Greenland, and uh, uh, very quickly disappearing and fragmenting and melt melting in uh, the ocean. Another important uh, impact of climate change is, of course, uh, the implications for our food security. And it's really hard to underestimate how sensitive our crops are to heat. They're sensitive to heat, they're sensitive to the changes of precipitation, they're sensitive to numerous diseases and pests that develop as a result of climate change. And uh, so food security is already a huge problem in many parts of the world. And as climate change is unfolding, and is accelerating droughts, is accelerating um, irregular patterns of precipitation, and is accelerating uh, various diseases caused by climate change and various vectors that cause these diseases. Um, our global climate food system is likely to become more and more fragile. So if we want to be food secure, we need to address climate change. As the patterns of temperature and precipitation are changing around the world, some areas that used to receive much higher levels of precipitation and used to have fertile agricultural lands are essentially becoming a desert. 
like those clay soles that we see in Sao Paulo state of Brazil, uh, which is known for its um, high agricultural productivity. And uh, so these soils are essentially becoming unavailable for the agricultural production as a result of the drought. And in other parts of the world, we see uh, floods that used to happen every 500 years, uh, in once in one 500 years, so in 100 years, and these events are becoming the reality of almost every year. So even as we speak in summer 2021, um, we see you know, forest fires in American West and extreme drought and heat wave and um, you know, the same is happening in the Mediterranean part of Europe, the same is happening in Australia. On the other hand, at the same time, we see, you know, huge amounts of precipitation in Southeast Asia, flooding in China, uh, flooding in Northern Europe. So you clearly see this uh, abnormal patterns of precipitation with extreme droughts and with extreme flood flooding. Uh, becoming more and more uh, the reality of our everyday life. Another important area of impact of climate change that we need to consider is um, associated with um, our biosphere, with biodiversity. We are now risking to lose about 50% of all land-based species in the century as a result of climate change. And again, this trend is accelerating. So not only we are living through the crisis of climate change, we are also living through the crisis of biodiversity because of climate change, but also because of other causes such as land use conversion, urbanization, and so on. And uh, so by the end of the century, we are likely to leave half of all the land-based species. Tropical diseases have been also on the move and on the rise around the world. As you can see from this map, there is a clear progression of um, various tropical infections such as West Nile virus and Rift Valley fever and uh, Chagas disease and Dengue fever and equine uh, encephalitis and uh, uh, Lyme disease. and uh, there, is, there are more and more infections that are kind of spreading around the world uh, way beyond their um, areas of origin, their kind of endemic area. They are becoming more and more pandemic rather than endemic. Uh, they're spreading, first of all, because the vectors that carry those diseases are spreading uh, following warmer and warmer temperature and very often also higher patterns of high amounts of precipitation. And second, the um, parasites themselves, just like in case of Zika virus on dengue fever or malaria, are also benefiting from the climate change and warmer conditions and more humid conditions. So uh, this um, kind of short dynamic graph shows you clear progression, you know, quick immersion of all these infections that are now pretty much chasing us all around the world. So as much as we are focusing right now on COVID-19, we need to realize that we are vulnerable to many other infectious diseases. And uh, um, you know, obviously COVID-19 is not the unique problem, even though it's not really related to climate change, but uh, it can provide us with many insights and help us to think how to adapt uh, to all those threats that are clearly accelerated by climate change. The last but not the least uh, area that I would like to highlight today in terms of talking about the impacts of climate change are the impacts on our built infrastructure. As um, climate change is contributing into temperature changes and precipitation changes and melting on the grounds, this contributes to massive losses uh, through collapse of buildings, collapse of tunnels, highways, uh, um, electric infrastructure, pipelines. Uh, one way how is it, ha how is it happening is that the permafrost, the so-called permanently frozen soils, um, the permanently frozen under certain depth in uh, 
colder climate areas such as in Alaska, in Canada, in uh, northern Europe and northern um, Russia uh, start melting and not only they're becoming a massive source of carbon going into the atmosphere, but also they're becoming very shaky and steady foundation for anything that has been built on those very solid grounds in the past. Another area uh, which is also very vulnerable to climate change are regions with uh, high concentrations of clay, as clay is losing moisture, it's drying, it's shrinking, it might be receiving a huge amount of precipitations during a short period of time and then shrinking again, and so it really causes massive disruption and collapse of uh, buildings, roads, and you name it, whatever is built on those grounds. So these are just a few examples of impacts of climate change and why, kind of helping us to think why we need to think about climate action and why it's so urgent to think about climate action now before all these impacts are becoming so amplified that there is not much that we can do or when adaptation is becoming so expensive uh, that essentially like, we cannot anymore continue as a society. So if you want to learn more, I strongly recommend uh, to read The Global Woman of 1.5 Degrees. This is a special report by the IPCC uh, that was released uh, three years ago now. And uh, uh, this report is specifically uh, specifically focusing on the impacts of global warming of 1.5 degrees centigrade above the pre-industrial level and um, uh, it really shows us uh, what kind of catastrophe we can prevent if we could uh, stabilize women and not allow women over 1.5 degrees or at least 2 degrees. So in the context of strengthening the global response to the threat of climate change, sustainable development and efforts of eradicate poverty are going to be increasingly important. You need to, if you want to learn more, please go to this website. Again, just like with the sixth report of the IPCC, I do not expect you, of course, to read the entire report. Uh, I strongly encourage you, on the other hand, to look through the um, uh, summary for the policymakers. Uh, it is available on the main website of the report if you follow this link. And I will see you next week.